What's up, Renegades? I'm Lupine Fiasco. This is your daily Fi gameplay, and today's game is against Uzuri Switchblade. For anyone who is new to the channel, welcome. What we do here is review replays of games that I've played on Talashar.net days or weeks ago. I walk through turn cycles as if I were playing them now while explaining my thought processes for the lines I take. We compare that to what I did in the past to either learn from our mistakes or internalize good play patterns. The goal is to optimize and tighten our gameplay in the future to walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. With the introduction out of the way, let's get into our sideboard and game plan. Today's game features my harmonized Kadachi list. If you would like to review the deck list or try it for yourself, you can find it in the video description below. While you're down there, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Subscribing is the best free way to support me and to make sure you see daily Fi gameplay in your video feed five days a week. We lose the die roll and Uzuri chooses us to go first. If we had won the die roll, we would have liked to go second. Uzuri has the opportunity to block our opening attack with all of the cards in her hand and redraw at the end of our turn. She will then get the first attack on our life total or hand in a way that we do not get to redraw at the end of her first turn. From our inventory, we are going to bring in our Searing Emberblade. We are also going to bring Mask of the Pouncing Lynx, and we are bringing Fiendal's Spring Tunic, leading our Tiger Stripe Shuko and our Snapdragon Scalers. Shuko and Snapdragon are easy. Uzuri does not deal Arcane Damage, so we do not need Spell Void 1, and we do not need Arcane Barrier. Why are we bringing Emberblade and Mask of the Pouncing Lynx? The answer is that Uzuri has a good defense in her armor suite, especially if she is on a fatigue list. Being able to buy back her head and legs will prevent us from getting attacks in with our Kadachis or Phoenix Flame. That will prevent us from drawing cards and ultimately leave us dealing less damage for no benefit. Uzuri also has a large amount of frailty between Codex of Frailty, Death Touch, and possibly Frailty Trap, depending on the Uzuri build. So Kadachis really are not where we want to be in this matchup. With our Ember Blade, even under the effects of Frailty, we are still dealing two damage with our weapon, which is putting pressure on Uzuri over the course of a longer game. Because we are not running our Kadachis and we are not expecting to hit very often in the turn, as Uzuri is totally fine to block, we are cutting Mask of Momentum and bringing in Mask of the Pouncing Lynx. As we leak damage on Uzuri, she will get lower and lower in life, and once we put her low enough, usually below 20, but if we could get her below 15 or even below 10 without breaking our Pouncing Lynx, now all of our attacks deal an additional five points of damage if they hit, because we can break Pouncing Links, find a Lava Burst, and throw it into the end of a long chain. So Uzuri needs to start blocking our weaker blues and our Phoenix Flames with cards from hand, which lowers the amount of aggression that she can put into us. Finally, because this is a very long game, we are going to use our Fiendal Spring Tunic. We are going to get quite a few activations over the course of a long game, and because we are never looking to arsenal a card, which I'll get into in just a minute, we want to have our Tunic Counter available if we draw an Art of War, so that we have sort of kind of a five card hand when we're really trying to push damage. Looking at the 60 cards in our list, we are just going to send what we have. This is a departure from sideboarding plans I've had in the past. If you've been playing my decks for a while, you know this is a pretty big change from the days when we would either fat stack Uzuri, run every card in our sideboard, or when we would bring in defense reactions. With the advice of some 
good Phi players. I am playing full aggression into Uzuri these days. The reason is Uzuri is going to do a lot of blocking on our turn and try to play out a two card hand on hers, either sending a card with stealth, then using her ability to swap in a better attack from hand, or just pitching a card from hand to attack with a Command and Conquer, a Shakedown, a Death Touch, or even a Surgical Extraction. Those are very disruptive cards. They have the ability to screw up our turn, but even if she's taking a card from our hand, with three cards, we can still outdamage her. If she wants to dedicate cards to blocking, then we can outdamage her, we start to win the race, our Mask of the Pouncing Links applies pressure, and now she finds herself on the back foot, whether she does or doesn't block. I talked briefly about running Fiendal Spring Tunic to generate a resource to act as a fifth card for our big Art of War turns. The reason for this is I never want to arsenal anything against Uzuri. Because she plays three copies of Command and Conquer, because she plays three copies of Leave No Witnesses, and because her hero ability makes it very difficult to know what exactly I need to block, I choose to never arsenal anything. Command and Conquer becomes Brutal Assault, Leave No Witnesses becomes Wounding Blow. We now need to block from hand much less because we do not have an arsenal to protect, and we get to blank a decent number of the cards in Uzuri's deck and cards that are otherwise very powerful. This does leave us open to disruption if it comes at the right time. A shakedown at the wrong time can leave us with very few options in hand. A Codex of Frailty will hit us hard as we will not have an arsenal to blank the forced discard. But we can always play around these effects. We can afford to take a turn or two off against Uzuri as she is going to brick on some of her disruption. She isn't Bravo. She does not have the consistency of disruption. And eventually she will run out of those effects. She only has three copies of Command and Conquer. She only has three copies of Leave No Witnesses. Sometimes she will need to pitch or block with Codex of Frailty. So if you are tracking her discard, if you are tracking what she pitches, you can identify when it becomes safe to arsenal cards. You can also be a little tricksy when you might take advantage of her off turn to arsenal a card and set up a stronger hand on your next turn. We're going to see how all of this comes into play within this game. So, sideboarding done. You know the game plan. Let's jump right into it. Phoenix Flame goes to discard, and we have an opening hand to look at. Thankfully, we have a blue, we have a Draconic Starter, and we have enough Draconic Links that we can play out our entire hand and pick up our Phoenix Flame. We are not looking to break Pouncing Links on turn 1. Uzuri has 40 health. Salt the Wound for 10 when our opponent is at 40 is a lot less powerful than Salt the Wound for 5 when our opponent is at 10. So, we are just going to play this out. Sequencing doesn't particularly matter, though I would like to save Soaring Strike for the end of the chain. See if Uzuri wants to give us a 3 block to block our 2 power Brain with Cinderclaw. We instead throw it first and see that we do get two cards out of Zuri for defense. So we are going to leak some damage this turn, which is really nice. Following Soaring Strike with Emberblade gets another card out of Uzuri. I'm expecting that Lava Vein Loyalty will get a card as well, though we are going to see if Uzuri wants to give us a whole card to stop a Brand with Cinderclaw, which she does. Frailty here doesn't matter, as we have already attacked with our Emberblade. Instead, we are getting two points of damage in with the Shuko buffed Phoenix Flame and ending our turn with a Lava Vein Loyalty. I'm not looking to Arsenal here, I just want to get my value. And leaking five points of damage over Uzuri's blocks feels really, really good. 
Uzuri here throwing an E-strike for five with go again. If we're looking at our hand here, we have the ability to block with one of our two blue three blocks and still fuel a very good turn. But E-strike for five is not an effect that I feel I need to block. I'm going to wait to see what Uzuri comes up with next. Now I would like to block with either blue. Soul bead strike, even with a Shuko, is only worth three points of damage. So depending on what Uzuri throws at me next, it may be better for me to get my defensive value rather than my offensive value with Soul Bead Strike. But if it's more vanilla damage, we are an aggro deck. Here, blue sedate coming for one. I have no idea what could be in Uzuri's hand. Death touch, shakedown, surgical extraction are probably what I'm most concerned about. But without a defense reaction and on our full aggro plan, even if one of these cards gets taken from us, we still have a turn. We can still do a thing. So I'm going to say no blocks. I'm going to hope that this is just a command and conquer for six with no on hit. Instead, we find a death touch. Kalish are a little glitchy here. This is a blood rot token that Missouri has given us. So effectively leaving us at 27 for the turn. As I said, Soul Beat Strike is worth three points of offensive value. We are not going to use it to pitch to the Blood Rot. We are going to throw it at our Uzuri's face. So we are not going to pitch for our Blood Rot trigger and we'll take two at the end of this turn. Uzuri here determined to give us cards from hand. This is great news as we are going to push seven more damage this turn. That will bring us down to roughly parity with Uzuri, especially if she's blocking with Black Tech Whisperers here. This three damage from Soul Beat Strike will bring us to a tie at 29. We will then take two. But overall, we're winning this race, especially considering that we went first. In theory, we should be behind here, and Uzuri just passes the turn. Looking at what we have in hand, with our Fiendal Spring Tunic available, we have a few lines. We can throw Ronin Renegade, Brand with Cinderclaw. How do we want to follow that up? We could E-Strike for 5 go again, pick up our Phoenix Flame and attack with that. We could Ronin Renegade, Brand with Cinderclaw, use our Spring Tunic to pick up our Phoenix Flame. Attack with that, then E-Strike for 7. Remember, we don't want to arsenal anything. So E-Strike is not going to draw us a card. We don't necessarily want to end our turn with a Snatch. Arsenaling a card when we have nothing else to do with it is fine. But if we can get even a little more offensive value out of our cards in hand without risking them to a Command and Conquer or leave no witnesses, we really want to do that. It might be aggressive to use our Spring Tunic here, but I do like Ronin Renegade, Brand Cinderclaw, Tunic to pick up a Phoenix Flame, then E-Strike for 7, bottoming our Snatch. We push a total of 14 damage this turn. That is above rate, if only slightly. But we are going to see how determined Zuri is to block out this damage, and she's giving us good cards. Codex exists. A Leave No Witnesses in Discard is not the same for an Uzuri as it would be for a class like Ninja that doesn't have access to that discard pile. But even so, this is Threat Density Lost from Uzuri. So overall, we're doing really, really well here. Getting two cards on defense for this E-Strike and puts us tied with Uzuri. Still not looking to break Pouncing Wings here. We are getting hit by a Codex. There are a few things to think about. 
My camera is blocking the chat. I will tell you that Missouri picked up Death Touch, intending to use the Spring Tunic to play it. We are looking at a maximum of 8 damage this turn, putting us down to 19. But let's say Uzuri picked up Leave No Witnesses instead. We don't want to protect our arsenal. We want to go all out on offense. So fortunately, if we had to, we could take our blue Soul Beat Strike, put that in our arsenal, discard a card from hand, not protect the Soul Beat Strike. We would take 4 from Leave No Witnesses. Yes, Uzuri banishes the top card of our deck, but she is only hitting a blue in our arsenal, so she is only getting a maximum of one silver from the Leave No Witnesses. It is not ideal to play out your blues. Ideally, you're pitching them to fuel stronger turns, but getting a blue or two into your discard against Assassin can be a very, very strong play because you don't feel as pressured to protect your arsenal because Leave No Witnesses won't generate a silver. Now, this all being said, this is not a Leave No Witnesses in Arsenal. This is a Death Touch. We are not going to block it. We don't need to worry about Inertia because we are going to play out the card in Arsenal. And we already have Frailty. So let's assume that we're going to get hit by a Blood Rot here. What is the best way to play out this hand? Well, we have a Salt the Wound in hand, we have a Phoenix Flame in discard, and we have a Double Strike in hand. So what we really need to do is keep our Double Strike, keep our Salt the Wound. We're going to keep Blaze Headlong because it's a 0 for 4 that gets turned on by the Double Strike. So that means we're discarding this Rising Resentment. We need to generate a second and third Draconic Link to be able to activate 5 for free so that we can get maximum damage on our Salt the Wound. And that means we're going to pick up a red brand with Cinder Claw. It'll only hit for 2, but if we open with our brand, then play a Double Strike, that creates two Draconic Links. Blaze Headlong is the third. We get to pick up our Phoenix Flame, and we are presenting maximum damage from our Salt the Wound. Missouri using the Tunic, attacking with the Death Touch, which we will not block. and Uzuri gives us another Blood Rot Ox. Draws from the Ponder, arsenals the card, and moves to end. This is going to be a very big turn from us. We could think about breaking Pouncing Links this turn, picking up another Salt Wound. Let's see how far through this turn cycle we get before Uzuri starts to block. Thankfully, we are throwing very small damage first. The floor for my Pouncing Links that I look for is 6. So, breaking Pouncing Links here is not the worst thing if we're expecting our Uzuri to start blocking out. It might be a bit premature. Like I had said, I like to wait until my opponents are under 20 before I start looking to break Pouncing Links. But what I am thinking here is that Uzuri has shown a commitment to keeping this hand, blocking two power attacks with three defense cards does not feel good, but Uzuri has shown that she wants to do quite a bit of blocking. So my thought here is if she wants to keep this hand, I'm going to make her pay for it. And we see that, in general, she is not looking to block. We did get an Oasis Respite from her. She pitches her second Codex that we've seen to play it out. So we don't push as much damage with this turn as I would have liked, but we mostly strip Uzuri's hand. We are ahead on life. And we get to push more damage, just keep up the pressure. We draw a bit of a stinker here with these two blue Lava Vein loyalties, but damage is damage. 
we can pitch one into the Ember Blade. We will play the other one out. Here I'm checking Uzuri's graveyard and seeing that she has blocked with three Command and Conquers. She has played one Leave No Witnesses, and we have seen two Codex of Frailties. I'm thinking about arsenaling this brand with Cinderclaw. Taking a chance, setting up a stronger five card hand on our next turn, and we see her block with the second Leave No Witnesses, we are absolutely going to arsenal this Brand of Center Claw. Now let's talk about why I'm blocking here. Two Soul Bead Strikes in hand means that I am pitching one and needing to play out the other if I don't want to get stuck with a pretty crummy blue in my arsenal. I would rather block with it. I would rather get my value where I can. I have a yellow bring the Cinder Claw in Arsenal. I will be able to pick up a Phoenix Flame and play a Lava Burst. I'm not worried about missing my Shuko trigger. So let's get our value where we can. Mitigate a little damage. I'm not expecting to not take damage here. We do see that I'm getting hit with Surgical Extraction. And Uzuri banishes the Ronin Renegade, thinking that she is going to hit one of our starters, our only starter even, and we show her that she is very, very wrong. You can also see what I'm saying about not blocking. Yes, without a card in Arsenal, this would have been a bit of a rough turn, but Uzuri spent her entire turn cycle to deal one point of damage to us, and the disruption didn't even matter. We got a little lucky that we were able to arsenal that brain with Cinderclaw, but we're doing fine, and we have tempo. Usury blocked with the flick knives, so we don't need to worry about getting hit with two points of damage out of nowhere on reactions. And now she is pitching to dagger us? Okay, absolutely fine uses the Tunic counter to attack with a second dagger. We are doing great. Finally, finishes with Leave No Witnesses. We have no cards in Arsenal, so we will not block. We lose a Lava Burst from the top of our deck. That is a bit tragic, but totally fine. With all reds in hand, we do want to play out our entire hand. So we are going to use our Spring Tunic to lead with Mountain Anger. This puts good pressure on Uzuri. She could block with a defense reaction. She could block with a three block from hand and her tunic. She could get us two cards from hand. Either way, we're doing really, really well here. We have a few options after the Mountain Anger. If we wanted to be really aggressive, we could attack with our Lava Bane Loyalty, our Blaze Headlong, pick up our Phoenix Flame, then bottom it to a Lightning Strike for 7. Depending on how this turn plays out, it's on the table. I don't like to banish Bottom or Pitch, the only Phoenix Flame in my discard, and my Kadachi list only runs the one copy, so losing it now means that we will never see it again. It really lowers the value of our turn cycles. I might be more excited about playing the Phoenix Flame and arsenaling our Enlightened Strike. Again, keeping in mind that we have seen basically all of the arsenal disruption that Uzuri can muster. Checking now, we do see three copies of CNC and three copies of Leave No Witnesses, so I'm feeling really, really good about playing the Phoenix Flame and arsenaling an Enlightened Strike especially with Uzuri going down to one card in hand. We know that the worst thing this could be is a codex to pick up a Leave No Witnesses and play it out. Arsenaling our Enlightened Strike means that we are not forced to discard to the codex. And with this game quickly coming to a close, a three block from hand plus our tunic blocks the Leave No Witnesses in its entirety. We do see Leave No Witnesses. 
We can block this with our Spring Tunic and our Love of Main Loyalty. We have an excellent hand of cards to play out while keeping our Light and Strike in Arsenal. We will play Rising Resentment, pitch to our Emberblade, pick up and play our Phoenix Flame, then Lava Burst for 6. That is a 13 damage turn cycle. Luzuri is going to have to give us at least 2 cards to not be dead. And we put her in a very bad position. She cannot kill us from 12 with two cards. She has no codexes left in this game. She has no leave no witnesses, no command and conquer. Even with a big shakedown to take a card out of our hand, we have our enlightened strike to set up five with go again. If we need to turn on our blaze headlong. We can just throw a big two card seven if necessary. So just seeing what we get out of Zuri here. Get a defense reaction. We put her down to three and prepare to kill Spider's Bite. We don't need to block that. Let's see what else is coming. Wither for one, again, we don't care. Whatever Uzuri can bring in is not scary enough. We see another Death Touch, giving us another Blood Rot. And the game should be over here. We can run and Renegade, Blaze Headlong, Searing Emberblade, pick up and play a Phoenix Flame, then E-Strike for 7, bottoming the E-Strike from our hand, and that should close out the game. We will not even get to the point where we would need to pay for the Blood Rot damage. Just taking advantage of our 3 power attacks. Blaze Headlong, going to leak a bit of damage. Putting Uzuri down to 2, Phoenix Flame taking her to 1. Finally, we are going to get a little cheeky with our E-Strike. We are going to choose to draw a card rather than buff power. The reason for this is that Uzuri only has one card in hand. The most damage that she can prevent with one card in hand is 4. If this is a defense reaction, Blocking four means she is still taking one. She is still losing the game. Of course, this doesn't matter. We do pick up the win with our E-Strike. And I feel really, really good about that game. I have had a rough string of losses to Uzuri, trying to play the value game, arsenaling my defense reactions, trying to get my value where I can, just finding that I'm forced into these uncomfortable positions where I don't want to block, but feel that I have to. And if I take all of that out of the plan entirely and go full aggro, we see that it works really, really well. Phi can definitely outrace Missouri, and if we play well around her disruption and get a few breaks, if we don't see shakedowns or if they do not show up until it's too late, then it should be an easy enough win. I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, if you liked the video, or if you just like seeing my pretty face to start your morning, go ahead and hit that like button for me. The comments section is always open for questions or feedback. I love hearing from all of you. I love interacting with the community. It's really, really satisfying to have you all here for daily Fi gameplay. And I'm excited to catch you all back here tomorrow for another gameplay video. Until then, have a great day. Take care.